About three years ago, I was excited about the Fuji GFX50S. It was side by side with the Hasselblad X1D, one of the first medium format cameras with a larger sensor than full frame, but still cropped compared to Phase 1 IQ4 and uh, in a format which was like I was used to it from DSLMs and DSLRs. So I was excited about that camera. I took it with me for a lot of shootings and let's have a quick look at some images taken in Jerusalem before we continue with the video. But then in September 2018, Fuji brought the GFX 50R to market. And I was immediately attracted by that camera. And I loved the sensor of the 50S, but I was attracted by the rangefinder style design of the 50R. And it's the same sensor, I could use my G-mount lenses, so I got a big temptation to sell the 50S and buy the 50R. But a short time after my switch from the 50S to the 50R, I lost interest and there are two main reasons why this happened and I'm going to share them in the video but I will also show what actually brought my attention back and why I now love this camera and why I love shooting with it. Let's get started. So a couple of years ago, I was shooting a lot, as I said in the intro to that video with the Fuji GFX 50S. And it was a nice camera. I loved having it with me in particular in Israel, in Jerusalem, Tel Aviv. And uh, I liked the quality coming from that cropped medium format sensor. I say cropped because the sensor in that camera here is medium format, but it is not the full medium format like you would see it in a Phase 1 IQ4. It's a cropped medium format, but substantially larger than what you get in a full frame camera. And I liked the image quality. I also liked the functionality Fuji builds into these uh, camera bodies. So you have a lot of functions and menu options. Although I should say that the menu is very messy. So for a beginner or someone who just starts in photography or someone who is not used to Fuji, the menu system is just nothing to write home about because it's very complicated, lots of sub menus, and you really need to know where to look if you wanna change something which is not overly obvious. But anyway, there were two things which finally hold me back when I replaced my Fuji GFX 50S by the 50R. So that's the 50R here. Uh, and the reason why I replaced it was, so I sold, uh, you know, my used GFX 50S and bought this one here is the rangefinder style. I just love rangefinders and people who follow me on my channel, they know how much I love my Leica cameras. This is just for me the, let's say, the reincarnation of photography. It's the essence of photography, having that style here. And although it's not a rangefinder camera, so this is an electronic viewfinder, a modern one uh, with a good resolution and an OLED display. So it is not a real rangefinder, but it has the appearance of a rangefinder. I'm just used to that style. I love it. I love shooting with it. I like it a lot. So I was attracted by that camera body, but then it turned out to end up in my cupboard. I didn't use it a lot. And there were mainly two reasons why I didn't use it a lot. And the first reason is the size of the lenses. If you look at that one here, this here is basically the smallest lens which was available some time ago for the GFX system. It's a 63 millimeter lens. So you have to crop this down by a factor of 0.79, 0.8 to convert this into full frame. So the focal length in full frame actually would be smaller. Um, but the lens, and this is the smallest one, is very big. And if you come to other lenses, let's put this aside here. Let's, for instance, take this one here. So this here is the standard zoom lens in the GFX system, 32 to 64 millimeters. If you mount that on the camera, it just becomes very big. So this is kind of the size and the weight, probably even going beyond what you would have on a Leica SL2. It completely destroys that rangefinder style feeling. It's a super intrusive camera if you wanna use it for street photography because it catches a lot of attention. It's bigger than most DSLRs out there if you look at the whole volume you have here. So it just didn't really find my liking in using it. 
And uh, there are other lenses, of course, you can use. I did shoot on the GFX 50S a lot with that wide angle lens here. So that's a 23 millimeter lens. And uh, that is a beautiful lens. Actually, all of those lenses have mechanical aperturings. So very nice build quality. Listen to the sound for a moment. Just as I'm used to from the Leica M series lenses and uh, I love that. But it's again very big. If you look at this mounted on the camera, it is very big. And the light weight of the body also gets basically clouded by the large weight of these lenses. So I didn't like that a lot. Uh, just for the sake of completeness, let's look into the last lens I typically used with my GFX 50S. That's this one here. So that's a 120 millimeter lens. It's a macro lens. I use this for portraits and of course for macro photography. I love macro photography. A huge lens hood coming with it if you put it on top. So that's another lens I use. And if you mount this one again, it's becoming very big, a very big lens. If you put on top of that, the lens hood, it's quite something to show around, very intrusive not really suitable for a rangefinder type body. So this completely changed a few weeks ago because I was made aware of a lens, which is this one here. So this is the kind of new Fujinon 50 millimeter uh, widest open aperture 3.5. You also have to crop down the aperture here a little bit. So this is probably in the area of a 2.8 if you convert this into a full frame format from medium format. It's a weather resistant lens like the overall body here. So that body is very robust. It's not breaking down. It will not let you down if you take it out in rough conditions in the environment. And that lens is also very robust. And actually this is the lens. It's very small. It's very lightweight. It perfectly fits. Let's just quickly get here the 63 millimeter lens protected. It very nicely fits that body here. And it finally seems to be the lens made for the GFX 50R. Again, solid build quality. Very nice aperturing, super solid, just enough push and power you need to turn this wheel here and turn the aperture ring, but not too much. And then the focus ring is super smooth. Look at that. It's a perfect focus ring. And I just love it in that combination. And now somehow the proportions seem to be right. You have a rangefinder style camera body, although not a rangefinder, but an appearance like a rangefinder. You have a small lens and the lens is very sophisticated. If you look at it, it has here lens hood which is just screwed on top of the lens. So very nice, very small lens, good combination. And by the way, the image quality of that lens is terrific. So I'm going to show at the end of the video a few examples. And now this is what I would call a street photography adequate camera. So you can do street photography now with that medium format camera, like you could do it with the Hasselblad X1D or, you know, all these full frame cameras, which are suitable for street photography, like in particular, Leica M series, which I use a lot when I'm out in the street because it's absolutely non-intrusive photography. And this combination now with that lens, if you compare it with the other lenses here, let's take this one here, is just the perfect combination. It seems that this lens is made for that body and I can only strongly recommend the lens. If you have that camera here, forget about all those large lenses, just shoot with the 50 millimeter here, which if you crop it down to full frame format, 50 times 0.8 is about 40 millimeters on full frame equivalent. So that's just the right combination. And uh, I'm in general, I mean, I have this zoom lens here for the GFX system 32 to 64, but in general, I'm anyway, let's say a fan of prime lenses because I think these zoom lenses never get at all focal length the quality of a prime lens. And shooting with a prime lens, in particular this one here, is a very nice focal length because 50 millimeter on full frame is kind of the angle you have with your normal eyes. And if you crop this down to full frame, 40 millimeters on full frame equivalent, it's just a little bit wider in the angle. 
but is still close to the normal natural perception of the human eyes. And that's very nice. And uh, typically my credo is that you don't need zoom lenses because you can do everything with your feet. Just walk away. If you need more distance, go closer if you need to come closer. But zoom lenses in many ways destroy the perfect photography, if you allow me to say that. Now, there was a second thing I was missing here and uh, that actually completed my journey to find the perfect equipment for the GFX50R and that's the grip. You see here the grip, the grip is a little bit too small. I have small hands for a male being, male human being, but it's still too small for me. And uh, I do not use straps around my neck because uh, they somehow always, they're itching, they're hurting, uh, they are uncomfortable. I don't like them. So I always have grips and people who follow my channel, they know that also on my Leica M series cameras, the Leica Q2 and so on, I always use these hand grips. And it was very hard to find a hand grip for the GFX 50R. I don't know why, but it seems that no one really had something meaningful to offer until I found this. So this is a Chinese brand called Pipro and I bought this at Amazon. What did I really say in German English? I bought this at Amazon. Well, I'm born in Germany, just as a side information, close to the Swiss border, but let's get this right and let's see how to pronounce this. Amazon's not making any money, they're just getting customers. Where are the profits? Where are the profits? And Wall Street kept beating you up on that, and your response was, I don't really care what you think. Amazon, 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 Amazon. So I likely bought this at Amazon and not at Amazon, but let's continue the video. It's actually not very expensive, and the grip looks like this here. So this is the grip. It's a little bit, let's say, color disruptive with that red, but it has some texture here, which makes a nice grip. And I think in general, you will see in a moment when I mounted this, that the red color matches the black color of the camera body quite well. And the way you mount this on is, you just put it on the top, and then you have a screw here, and you can basically screw this firmly to the camera body, the bottom of the camera body, and then it's fixed, oops, sorry. It's fixed mounted. Yes, that looks good. And there are also two additional screws here, which you could unscrew, and then you get uh, the extension of the grip away. So you can also customize this a little bit. And I think now it's perfect. Look at that. I mean, the red color is not kind of destroying the overall appearance of uh, the G GFX 50R. It looks like a rangefinder camera. It feels like a rangefinder camera. It's a little bit inflated, bigger than what we have on the Leica M series bodies, but it gives you the feeling and the lens is just perfectly matching. The grip is perfectly matching. And if I have my hands here, this just gives me that additional level of security that I'm sure I will not let it slip down and regret forever that I not had these straps around my neck. So that's just perfect. So there would be many things to say about this camera, but uh, I will not do a full walkthrough of the capabilities or on the menu system. But there are a few points I want to point out before I come to a few samples. Shot with that camera, rangefinder style with the perfectly matching lens, 50 millimeter, lightweight, very solid, and uh, just very good from an optical perspective. And uh, these points I want to make, they are in the menu. And as I said before, the menu is messy on Fuji cameras. It's rich, it's a lot of things you can tweak, which is on the positive side of the coin. But on the flip side of the coin, if you're not used to it, you get lost very easily in the menu structure. And um, what I want to show is in the third section, so that's in the camera section here, and first of all, it has interval timer shooting, and that's great for time lapses. Most modern cameras have it built in today. You have it in the Leica SL2, in the Sony A7R4, you have it in uh, even in, uh, I think, the Nikon C7. For the Canon EOS R, you probably need an external intervalometer, or you use a trick I learned some time ago where you can use the bulb mode and then program it like a timer. So there are different ways cameras implement intervalometers or maybe don't implement it. It's also on the Leica Q2. But here I think it's very nice. You have the number of frames you can program, the interval between the frames. Uh, you can have a countdown before it starts shooting the sequence. So that's quite nice, but still pretty much standard. 
Bracketing is also standard in most cameras. Film simulation is something which is special for Fuji cameras because they had uh, many years ago these different film rolls with different appearance and atmosphere and coloring and grading and maybe graining. And uh, you can simulate this in all Fuji cameras I'm aware of and you can also do film simulation bracketing here. But what I like a lot and that's not for granted in modern cameras is focus bracketing. And with focus bracketing, you can basically program your camera in combination with an autofocus lens to actually shoot a sequence of images with slightly modified focus so you can stack them later together, which is very useful in macro photography. We are typically have a shallow depth of field, but if you do a sequence of shots, stack them on top of each other and have a varying focus so that you get a large depth of field in terms of sharpness, that is something very nice. And that camera has it built in and uh, that's not for granted in modern cameras. Uh, you know, my Phase 1 IQ4 has it and I have a video on my channel where I demonstrate this. There is also another video coming very soon where I use the Phase 1 IQ4 with the macro lens from Schneider Kreuznach Blue Ring to demonstrate uh, focus stacking for product photography, uh, but it's not for granted. And I think that's a nice feature for a camera like this. And there are many more good things hidden in that menu which you can use. And I think in general is a great camera for, as I said, street photography as a camera to take it with you in a small backpack if you don't want heavy weight. And as I also said, you can actually live with a 50 millimeter lens on medium format like this one I have mounted here. Uh, which corresponds to 40 millimeter on full frame because it's just the perfect viewing angle very close to the natural appearance of the human eye. So I think that's everything I wanted to say. Maybe for the sake of completeness, the only real shortcoming of that camera is video filming. And uh, given the time when it came to market, given the standard of modern cameras, given the price tag you pay for that camera, so it's about $4,500, and the expensive lenses on top of it, I think 4K video should have been built in. The GFX100 has it, the GFX50R does not have it, and I think that's a big flaw. But I'm not in general a video shooter, so I stick more to still images, and that's why it is not uh, disturbing me. And I also have nice 4K video capabilities in other cameras I own, so I can live with that shortcoming. Let's come now to a few samples, and then let's conclude the video. The images show Zurich downtown under COVID-19 lockdown and uh, the last weeks I was strictly working from home but on this Saturday I had to go to the office to pick up some urgent stuff and carry it home for continuing my work. And you see already here the streets are empty. This is a Saturday. It was a Saturday morning and typically the city is packed full of people because we have, I don't know, in you know Zurich 700,000, around Zurich another couple of hundred thousand people who all go downtown for shopping, enjoying the sun, going for a coffee, going to restaurants and just enjoying their free weekend. And this city is empty. It's completely empty. And uh, I was taking the opportunity and since I had to go to the office, doing a little walk outside in the city and capturing images what COVID-19, that freaking little virus, has done to my city here. So quite sad if you look at that, but it's something we have to cope with. So people should stay at home. They should do home office wherever possible and they should keep themselves and their families safe. What we all hope for is that we can return to normal life once in a while, but that while will take a while. Unfortunately, it's reality. So let's deal with it. Let's start with the images and enjoy the slideshow I prepared and then let's conclude the video.
I've never before seen my city so empty, my hood where I spend time when I do not work. Coming back to the camera, the camera is now a fantastic combination. That 50mm lens, full frame 40mm and the hand grip is just what that camera needed to become a really good camera for non-intrusive photography but terrific image quality. Besides the fact that it cannot record 4K, but as I said, that's not bothering me. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when new content is coming up. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and peace out.